So we're in the old operating theatre museum, and next door is the Herb Garrett. And this was actually built as an operating theatre for women in 1822 as part of St. Thomas's Hospital. The women's ward was actually alongside the uh, Herb Garrett, and uh, that's why this became the women's operating theatre. And you can see why it was called an operating theatre, because it has this stepped uh, viewing arrangement above it from which the students could watch the procedures taking place on the table down here. This particular operating theatre would have been quite an unpleasant place to visit, either as a spectator or as a patient. It was a working site from 1822 to 1862, which meant that it didn't see uh, either antiseptic uh, developments come in or anaesthesia. So this would have been a pretty brutal, bloody, noisy, smelly, disgusting place. You'd have most likely been dosed with sort of alcohol or some kind of sedative, maybe given a large wooden pole to bite on to kind of um, stop you from screaming or thrashing around. And a common form of surgery, amputation, for example, would have taken all of one minute to actually remove the necessary limb or digits or whatever it was going to be. This being a women's ward, um, prenatal and obstetric-related uh, operations would have likely have been common, and that was a particularly unpleasant procedure, as we'll see from some of the tools and um, devices used for removing troublesome uh, fetuses next door. So there would have been a, a pretty unpleasant paw hanging over this place at any given time. But the place was also used as, a, as, as a, an educational centre, so students would often have been here to watch, uh, I would imagine, to watch bodies being dissected. And interestingly, this whole region of Southwark was well known as the home of the Borough Boys, who were a particularly notorious group of body snatchers. And uh, it wasn't until 1832 that the body snatching laws came into effect, so for a good 10 years it's quite likely that uh, the bodies being dissected here had been pinched from neighbouring churchyards, perhaps even been the victims of murders by the Borough Boys themselves. So this is an account from The Lancet from uh, April 1824 and documents the unfortunate story of, of Elizabeth Reagan, aged 60, who was admitted to the hospital on the 19th of April 1824 with a compound fracture of tibia and fibula after being hit by a large carriage, presumably somewhere nearby. Now, for several days, Elizabeth was just left in a bed um, and watched by the doctors who noted that her condition was worsening despite it just being a minor fracture. So uh, fearing that she might die, it was decided 10 days later that she should be operated upon. And so she'd have been brought into this very room and this is what happened from The Lancet. 30th of April, 1894. Patient rather weaker than yesterday. At half past one o'clock, she was brought into the female operating theater to undergo the operation. The tourniquet being applied and the artery in the groin compressed well, an assistant supported the limb while the operator proceeded to amputate about three inches above the knee joint. The usual steps of the operation having been completed, great care was taken that as little blood as possible should be lost. Three vessels were soon secured, the wound was dressed, and the patient removed from the theatre in 20 minutes from the time she was first brought in. About four ounces of blood were lost. During the operation, the patient was quite faint, as you might imagine she would be, and brandy and wine were administered, which revived her a little. On examining the severed limb, it was found an oblique fracture of the tibia and fibula, about three inches above the ankle joint together with extensive laceration of the integument, skin, extending from two inches below the head of the tibia to the inner, inner malleus, ankle bone. Uh, no attempt at union of the bone had been set up. So this was quite a minor injury by our standards. You would expect to be in and out of hospital in an afternoon, I would think, with something so small. But um, in uh, Elizabeth Reagan's case, this resulted in first amputation of the leg above the knee, and then sadly, a few days later, she gradually sank and died. Her body was not examined. <laughs>